21st meeting of the Mayor and City Council of Laurel. This is Monday, October the 24th. We're meeting in regular time. It's 7 p.m. I'll ask for everyone to stand, and we will have the invocation led by Reverend Warren Litchfield, the Pledge of Allegiance led by Mayor Mo. Members of the City Council, for all of authority, earth, and sense of the strength and wisdom on the huge behalf of all our people. And the city, this county, the state, and this nation, and our people, and merciful care and understanding. Ask for the word if you will remember those who are by one of them. Remember those who are born. Name of the one of our life. Bring it on, man. Amen. Mayor. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let me state for the record that um, I will uh, take, and there's a sign-up list on the other side, and I will restrict to the uh, amount of time that we're going to be talking, or that you all will be talking to a two minutes for each item. So with that, Madam Clerk, call the roll. Ms. Nicholas? Here. Mr. Laz? Here. Ms. Crary? Here. Mr. Smalls? Here. President Ricks? Here. Mayor Mel? Here. Okay. I'll ask for the approval of the minutes of the 19th meeting of September the 26th and the 20th meeting of October the 12th. I have a motion. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Ms. Crary? Yes. Ms. Nicholas? Yes. Mr. Lez? Yes. Mr. Smalls? I abstain. I wasn't here. President Rex? Yes. I'll call for the report of the Mayor and City Council, Ms. Nicholas. Thank you. Yesterday I attended the Laurel Volunteer Fire Department open house. It was very informative. I learned a lot about fire safety and prevention, and I just encourage everyone to make sure they have a working smoke detector. I also attended with my council the MML conference, and I attended two wonderful informative sessions that was foreclosed and blighted properties and the economic development, creating opportunities, and enhancing communities. Very informative. A lot of great information that we brought back. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Les. Thank you, Mr. President. On October 13th, uh, with the Patuxent River Commission, I took a boat tour of the lower portion of the Patuxent River to gain a better understanding of cliff erosion and its impact on the river. Uh, as uh, Councilwoman Nicholas reported, on October 13th, 15th, attended the MML Fall Legislative Conference. October 15th, attended the Laurel Volunteer Fire Department Awards Banquet. Congrat congratulations to all the volunteers and award winners. October 21st, I attended the Dimensions Foundation's meet and greet at Woodmore. Uh, a very pleasant evening. Uh, not much conversation, but a very pleasant evening. Uh, sincere condolences to the family, friends, and neighbors of Mrs. Ruth Block, who passed away on October 20th. She would have turned 100 years old, years old in November. Many, many years ago, Ruth, along with her husband Albert, owned and operated Block's department store on Main Street. Uh, we will miss Ruth. That concludes my report, Mr. President. Thank you, Ms. Query. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, in addition to the uh, events that have already been named, the, uh, I attended the uh, 4th of July yard sale on Saturday. In addition, I attended the uh, Maryland Million uh, events at Laurel Park with my colleagues. The participation was up, which is good news, and the purses were up. I certainly made my contributions and didn't take anything back. <laughs> I also would like to uh, thank the Laurel Volunteer Fire Department for having their open house yesterday. Uh, as Ms. Nicholas uh, referred to, there's a lot of equipment and a lot of uh, technology and a lot of uh, expertise that goes into that station. 
and I think we should avail of ourselves of it, the citizens, before we need them in an emergency. Additionally, I would send prayers and thoughts out to the family of Trisha Bayless and her family and friends who passed this weekend. Thank you. Mr. Smalls. Thank you, Mr. President. I, uh, I had an opportunity to participate in a number of the events uh, already mentioned by my colleagues. I just want to announce that on uh, November 3rd, the Environmental Affairs Committee will reconvene. Uh, among the items that are on our agenda is we'll be looking at uh, designing a web page on our city's website for in the Environmental Affairs Community, uh, a committee rather that will um, hopefully have a number of links uh, to environmental sustainable kinds of uh, uh, projects that property owners, homeowners uh, can undertake, uh, as well as uh, information about uh, some of the environmental and sustainable kinds of things that the committee uh, are looking at. We recently had some folks come in to talk to uh, the mayor and council about hydraulic fracking. Uh, those kinds of things may be among the things that the <clears throat> Environmental Affairs Committee will be looking at and possibly uh, providing information on. So uh, the all of our citizen advisory committees are open to the public. So if anyone is interested in uh, sitting in on that meeting, it begins at 7 o'clock on November 3rd. I'm not sure which room. Uh, will be in, but the information will be available at the front desk. That's my report. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Um, I'd like to also send out my personal condolences to May and ba May Lynn and Bill Bayless and family on the untimely passing of their daughter, Tricia. She was only 42 years old, so it is a very, very untimely death. I'd also like to uh, likewise uh, send out condolences to the Al and Ruth Block family on passing of Ruth Block. She was a great woman. She always voted in the elections. Uh, Mr. Les and I, um, at our last elections, we went down to see her and she submitted her absentee ballot and she knew who we were and was happy to do it for us. So again, condolences. Mayor Mo. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, let me also give uh, condolences to uh, uh, Bill and Maylin Bayless, uh, lifelong members of the Laurel Volunteer Fire Department and uh, long volunteers of the city of Laurel. Uh, Maylin and Bill give many uh, hours on the canteen as well as uh, the holiday party here and the passing of Patricia Bayless, who was a member of the Greenbelt Volunteer Fire Department, and as you heard, uh, 42 years old. That's just way too, uh, too young, and um, services will be held uh, uh, later on, I'm sure this week as they announce those. Also to uh, Mrs. Block and the passing of uh, Mrs. Block. Also, I learned tonight uh, the passing of uh, Betty Booz who passed away. Uh, so our condolences to the Booz family as well. Me, um, thank the Department of uh, Public Works for the electronics and uh, recycling and shredding event that they held. And uh, again, uh, I, thank you. I, Good turnout. I don't know what was the tonnage, or you know, Rob. Very good, very good turnout, and uh, thank uh, your staff. And actually, I went down there, dropped stuff off. And thank the chief of police who was down there uh, helping out. And he said you guys help him out an awful lot, so he wanted to help out too. So uh, uh, good job. I don't know if he was doing some shredding of his files or not, but he was there helping <laughs> us. So, um, but uh, thank you all for doing that. Also, uh, to the Laurel Volunteer Fire Department, uh, thank you for uh, your service and your uh, the opportunity to be at your banquet and to uh, the Firefighter of the Year, Michael Karkoff. Uh, let me congratulate him again for uh, being uh, awarded the Firefighter of the Year. Uh, the uh, first annual McSeeney March um, had the opportunity to participate in that. The Laurel Historical Society put that on as a fundraiser. And, Got to walk my three miles that morning. A little little windy out, but uh, it was a good time, and uh, I think they raised some money and very good turnout um, for the first event. The prescription drug uh, take back day at the Laurel Police Department that Saturday also took part. Good turnout, Chief. Good. Um, let me also remind you in the lobby, you don't have to wait for once a year to do your um, prescription drugs. They're 
to drop off. We have a uh, prescription drug box there in the lobby. You can take them back anytime, 24-7 uh, in the lobby. The green box is there. You can drop off your prescription drugs. We encourage you not to drop them down the toilet or down the sink. Uh, take them to the police department. It's a secure box there, and you can do that anytime free of charge. Um, I want to thank them, uh, Laurel Park, for the opportunity and the invitation to be at the Maryland Million Day at Laurel Park. I had the opportunity to uh, lose a little money, too, so I'm not much at picking horses. I just pick a no name and looks good. I drop a dollar or two, but didn't even do too good of that. So, uh, but thank you. Five and, bucks. Yeah. <laughs> thanks. Thanks, Eddie. <laughs> so, um, Tomorrow night is the Ethics Commission uh, here at City Hall, if you're interested, uh, 7 p.m. to, to the uh, public, uh, as well as if you're interested in participating or being involved in any of the city's com uh, committees, we encourage you to participate in your government. You can send us your short resume, um, send it to my office, and we'll uh, keep it on file and uh, do have some openings on our commissions and committees, so uh, be involved. I think I uh, got a presentation, but Ms. President, with uh, your indulgence, I'll go ahead and make some appointments real quick, and then I'll do the presentation. Um, uh, Barbara Boschert for uh, Tree Board from 1024-16 uh, to 1024-18, Patsy Faddis Tree Board 1024-16 to 1024-18, and Bobby McSeney Tree Board 1024-16 to 1024-18. I'd ask for your approval. May I have a motion? Mr. President, I move for approval of the... Can I put a second? Second. Thank you. Madam Clerk? Mr. Lez? Yes. Ms. Crary? Yes. Ms. Nicholas? Yes. Mr. Smalls? I vote yes. President Rex? <laughs> yes. And we thank every one of them for serving. It's a great thing for you to do to give back to your community. Mayor Mo. So um, we have a presentation to make. We actually had two. One couldn't make it, so we'll hopefully uh, do that later on. Uh, but this gentleman, I was joking with him. I knew him when he had no gray hair. Uh, both of us actually, uh, Walter and I, go back a little ways when our department days when we were doing uh, things over uh, over at uh, Ivy Hill for the fire department. Um, but Walter, uh, again, him and his company have done outstanding things for the community and the city of Laurel. We want to acknowledge that. As you're well aware, if you go out front, you'll see the 9-11 Memorial. It's up on the screens. I want to thank Marty. I want to thank many in the city that really um, helped us out this year to uh, make that happen. It's a beautiful site. And again, I encourage those um, that are here tonight and, and watching at home to, to stop by and take a look at it. But Walter, why don't you come on up because we have a mayoral citation that we want to present to you. Present it to Walter Tigler for your grateful appreciation and your generous uh, efforts in the construction of the City of Laurel's 9-11 Memorial, September the 26th, 2016. It's presented by uh, myself and the Laurel City Council. We also have a little city pin. It's a key to the city, and I always like to remind you, it gets you out of no tickets. It doesn't open any doors, but we're proud to present it to you anyway. Well, congratulations. Thank you very much. Just that uh, this is a long time coming. Uh, on top of the uh, the memorial is a piece of steel from one of the the uh, twin towers at the World Trade Center. Um, we got that in 2008. It's taken us quite a quite a long time to memorialize that. But uh, there were a lot of people involved, uh, a lot of staff, uh, and uh, two contractors involved. Uh, Tigler Monuments, as well as uh, um, Amy Tree. A Day Tree, um, John Anna, um, they provided a lot of their services at no no charge to the city. Tree I'm sorry, Adirondack Tree Service. Parking Bless me. Facility. I got them tonight. I fixed that. Sure. Uh, but anyway, we would like to extend our, our sincere appreciation to those two contractors for working with our staff to make this happen. Thank you again, Walt. Oh, that's fine. No, I just want to thank everybody for allowing me to be. Part of such a special project, actually, um, it, 
It's a, a lot of emotions in a project like this, actually. It's uh, quite an event, and I know the steel, we've seen it sitting in the showcase here in the pretty hall here for a while, so we're glad to get it taken care of. Thank you. Anything else, Mayor? Thank you. We'll move on to item number eight on our agenda, and that's a general public hearing. I'll open that at 7.15. And uh, Steve, you wanted to speak again on the snow emergency? I was going to just add some information that I had. Uh, well, come on. Okay. Give your name and address for the record, if you would, please. Press the little button. I think you've gotten very experienced at that now. Green there you there go. Is Steve Greer, 7210 Old Sandy Spring Road. Um, I counted the cars um, that are generally parked along the um, odd side of the, um, uh, the even side, rather. Um, <clears throat> and there were, as of tonight, well, there was 25 cars parked uh, from Dorset to the dead end. And um, in, in the neighborhood of uh, Sandy Spring, we have... Um, we have three healthcare workers, nurses, and uh, fire department, and a police officer. And they regularly would park up on Sandy Spring Road uh, when snow is predicted to give them a fighting chance to get to wherever they have to go. Because Sandy Spring, they, our neighborhood is down down at the bottom of a hill, and um, I think that's that's all, all I'm really concerned about. There's no parking on the even side, so it's not like during a snow emergency you could then move your car across the street. So I'm not sure what everybody in that in that end of town would uh, would do other than just get towed. So, um, and I just wanted to um, say I want to work, you know, on the committee or help any way I can to, uh, to make Sandy Spring Road, Old Sandy Spring Road, a, a safer street. Okay, well, thank you for sharing that with us. And uh, you're welcome to come back with any other observations that you have, sir. Appreciate your interest. I got a committee for you too, just so you know that. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Greer, why don't you send his name into the mayor? Okay. Is there anyone else wishing to speak on any topic whatsoever? Seeing none, I'll close the public general public hearing at seven eighteen. Thank you. I will move on to item number nine. This is the second public hearing of possible action on ordinance number 1869. An ordinance of the mayor and city council of Laurel, Maryland, amending the city code chapter nine, miscellaneous, miscellaneous provisions and offensive of section 9-20, grocery cart storage. I've read this into the record for the second reading. I'll open the general public hearing at 718. Is there anyone wishing to speak on this topic? Let me state for the record that uh, we did not get all the work done that we wanted to get done on this topic, and we have some more notifications that we want in order to be fair with everyone. So I'm going to have this item pushed over to our meeting for a third possible, I mean, a third reading and a possible action on November the 14th. And the clerk and I will work to get those letters out in timely fashion. So I'll close the general public hearing on this item at 719. Item number 10, second public hearing and possible action on ordinance number 1882. An ordinance of the mayor and city council of Laurel, Maryland, amending the, the code of the city of Laurel, chapter seven, garbage, trash, weeds, etc. Article two, refuge collection and disposal service by repealing and reenacting with amendment section 7 23, supplemental collections, prohibited materials, to clarify that the property owners are responsible for supplemental residential collection services provided to the provide, excuse me, provided to the property they own. I'll open this uh, public hearing at 720. Is there anyone wishing to speak on this topic? Seeing none, I'll close this public hearing at 7.20 and a half. What's the pleasure of the council? Mr. Cutler? Yes, ma'am. I recommend that we 
pass ordinance number 1882 is read into the record. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Madam Clerk. Ms. Crary? Yes. Mr. Lez? Yes. Ms. Nicholas? Yes. Mr. Smalls? I vote yes. President Ricks? Yes. Mayor Mel? Thank you, Mayor. Item number 11. This is the second public hearing with possible action on ordinance number 1884. An ordinance to amend section 17-76 of the City of Laurel Code to designate all of Sandy Spring Road and Brooklyn Bridge Road from Patuxent Road to I-95 overpass as a snow emergency routes. I'm opening that public hearing at 721. Is there anyone wishing to speak further on that topic? Seeing none, I will close it at 721 and a half. What's the pleasure of the county? Mr. President. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There was an amendment in that title. Okay. The amend the ti amended title reads an ordinance to amend section 17-76 of the Laurel City Code to designate, and then we're deleting all of Old Sandy Spring Road, and then we're including from Van Dusen Road to Dorset Road, Sandy Spring Road from West Street to Van Dusen Road and Brooklyn Bridge Road from Patuxent Road to the I-95 overpass as snow emergency routes. And this legislation is in your book. Mr. Frick. Uh, yes, that was based on uh, uh, Mr. Greer going out there and looking at the area of how many people were parked along Old Sandy Spring Road and taking consideration of where they may park. <laughs> and basically with Dorset Road already a snow emergency route, uh, I amended it just to go to Dorset Road and then continue, you know, on Dorset Road out to Brooklyn Bridge so that it covers the area uh, a little bit easier to, to maintain the uh, snow emergency route. All right. So can the motion be as, as subject to the amendment? Is that okay? May I have the motion to amend the title? So moved. Thank you. Second? Second. Got it. Madam Clerk on the amendment. To amend the title, correct? Yes. Mr. Les? Yes. Ms. Crary? Yes. Yes. Ms. Nicholas? Yes. Mr. Smalls? I vote yes. President Ricks? Yes. Now I'll take a motion to adopt. Mr. President, I'll move that we adopt ordinance number 1884 as amended. Thank you. We have a second. Second. Thank you. Madam Clerk. Mr. Les? Yes. Mr. Smalls? I vote yes. Ms. Nicholas? Yes. Ms. Crary? Yes. President Ricks? Yes. Mayor Mel? Yeah, I'm going to concur so long as we understand that the second whereas and in in section B it refer reference that as well. I'll concur. Thank you. Is there anything else to come before the council? I have one thing. Yes, ma'am. Um, two things. I'd also like to send my condolences to Maybin and Bill, and I'd also like to put the reminder out that the Youth Services Commission is their deadline for the grant applications is October 31st. Right. Thank you. Anything else? We stand adjourned. Thank you.